All right, so we are back again. It is a new day. I magically changed my get up. I actually just kind of finished working. So we are going to play with this again because I feel like I'm a little bit behind on it now. So we're going to get rolling. And off camera, what I accomplished was I got the correct tap, quarter, 18, and PT. And then I finished tapping these holes out. And these are the feed lines, feed and return. So you drill it through here, tap it, and then I drilled it out here, and I drilled this one out down here a little bit as well. So you still see plenty of meat around it, but that gives it a bit better flow. And then I threaded these things in and just called it a day. Clean everything up real nice. And uh, we are good to go on that section. So the other reason that th this tap is important to me is there's another step that I will do with it. So it was imperative that I had the actual correct tap. Now we can move on to the pump because I have the correct tap and we will open that up. I have not opened it yet. So first time we will see it together. Hopefully the thing's in good shape. All right, so this is the pump. This is the stator. There's a bushing we'll replace. I'm gonna flip it over to get to the bolts in the back side where the actual party happens. So this is the gasket that goes along the case. We gotta take these bolts out, thrust washer, all that fun stuff. So let's take these things off, take all this off. We'll set it over here. Well, that made quick work of that, huh? All right, well, I don't think it was supposed to happen like that, but uh, that is the quick method, quick disassembly. Anyways, uh, yeah, so here's a look at the two different halves, the stator side and then the pump body side is what I've heard it referred to as. These are the gears. These are the tangs that line up with your torque converter. When your torque converter slides in, this is what it actually locks into. So let me, Mark these because these gears need to go in the same direction because I'm reusing these. Hopefully we'll check to see if they're good. I will show you how to do that. So I'm gonna put a little mark on both of these before we take that out. And then we can inspect this and then look at the rest of this guy. Okay, so it didn't take much. I just put two little dimples so I know that those go together. There's it, and then we can pull our gears out. So obviously here's your gears, this is the body. And then from what I understand, if you could feel anything in here, um, you need to replace this or have it machined, but it looks good. The one modification I did see at FTI did because these gears spin this way, is they rounded these edges off. So I might actually at least take a piece of sandpaper and kind of, they do a nice job because they have a CNC, but at least I'm gonna grab this edge off of here because he was talking about the gear actually edge catching that, which I can see how that could happen. And this is a machined edge, it's real sharp. Like it grabs your finger, this thing is sharp as all get out. So at least I'll deburr both sides of that, even this one, even though it's spinning in that direction. But we will do that. I like the idea that they see and see that. Obviously I can't, so we will just do what we can uh, with what we got. Okay, on to your gears. This is how they said to check them. You mesh the gears together and you pull the inside gear and it should drag the outside one with it. Guess we're gonna say that's good, I'll double check. But yeah, that's what they said. If you could put it on there and you can pull it and it pulls it. So I think if those two outer teeth are catching still, there's enough left on the pump. Um, I would imagine we're gonna try it anyway. So the next thing I wanted to show you guys, so that is our pump gears. Here's the other thing, this is what I want to show you. This is what we're gonna drill and tap. So there's this guy right here, it has a pin. This is your primer. So what we'll do is we'll drive this pin out and there's a little piece that comes out. So this, this pin right here is known for breaking and causing a problem. And if this primer comes out, you have zero line pressure. So you think your transmission is toast, but it is not, it is this guy coming out. So we will take this out, pull the primer out. And this is what I'm actually gonna tap and put the plug in is this hole right here. Here's a spring, pin, bam, piston. We disassembled it. This thing was invaluable to get this little piston pushed out. So that's it, this goes in. 
spring rides against it, pin holds it all together. Well, this pin is just a little roll pin. Hollow, they break. The guys are saying they do solid pins, all kinds of different stuff, but the best way to do it is you take this hole right here and you tap it. You make sure the threads go past this portion so that way you can bottom out the threads. I'll show you what I mean by that. If I find my little, my little guy. So you can see it almost fits already. We're just gonna tap this out. It should be the right size. Make sure, see if I have to drill it, but I think I just straight tap it. And this plug needs to cover that hole so there, there's no pressure loss. That's the other thing too. So when it goes down, it needs to bottom out past the roll pin hole. Got it, so we're gonna thread it past the roll pin hole, thread this guy in, we should be good to go. Okay, so I got this thing tapped. The book over there says that I put it back in this way, this is the way it came out, with this facing down, and then the spring gives it spring tension, and then this basically holds it. So I will put it back in the way it's supposed to go, like so. And then before I do that, I'm gonna need two hands, but I don't have a squirt bottle, so I just dried out a water bottle, poked a little hole in the top, and then we'll use that to lubricate stuff as we go and put it back together, like the pump and, and all those fun things. So the next modification we're gonna do is this is the lubrication hole for the high drum. And the book says basically you drill this straight through to the other side, so then you're gonna have two of these and then it has a slight chamfer on this, so we have to chamfer that. It's a 3 16th hole, so let me get my drill bit, punch this one over here straight through, and then we'll figure out how to kind of chamfer it all. Let's get some sandpaper and we'll work it if we have to. All right, so we've got that drilled through, so this is the factory hole. With the chamfer on it, and this is my hole that they said to drill straight through, so. Let me figure out how to clean that edge up and then we'll come back and we'll do that. Okay, here is my finished product. It's probably hard to see, but I chamfered the edge enough. When you when you rub your finger on it, nothing's grabbing. This is the factory one. So I'm just gonna call that a victory. We'll go from there. If you're wondering how I did it, I had these cheapo Harbor Freight like diamond tip things. I forget why I bought them, but they were basically crap. But this had the cone on it, just threw a little grease on it and worked it around and I don't know. Good enough for my race car, I know that. So let's move on. To the next hole that we're going to enlarge on the pump. Up in this next one is actually pretty stressful because if you've ever used like a teeny tiny drill bit, yeah, exactly. If you've ever used, if you've ever used a teeny tiny drill bit, you know that they just suck. So let's be really careful with this next one. So this little hole right here lubricates the thrust washer. Some of the aftermarket pumps, they machine it and there's a bearing, which seems like a way better idea to me, but um, I don't believe I have said bearing. I've got this bad boy, which it just rides against it. So you need all the lubrication, obviously you can get. So I got to drill that guy out to 110 thousandths. And I actually have the drill bit because I was kind of like, well, maybe we'll just skip this step, but I have it. So I'm kind of like, man, so we're gonna do it. We're just gonna be very, very gentle. Please don't ruin my day. Please don't ruin my day. All right. Let's be gentle, baby soft. No more stress for Dane. Come on, little guy. Okay, it's almost through. Yeah, it just, it, it doesn't go all the way through to the inside. It just breaks through to the inside of that passage. All right, we did it without Snapping a bit off. That's what I was so worried about. Yeah All right, here she is BAM New and improved Okay, that was super stressful. The other ones are much bigger. So let's move on I will show you where the other ones are to drill out next set of holes this mamma jamma and then this dude and then on the corresponding holes on the cover, which we will find. So this is probably gonna be an issue because the stator, I don't know if I've got a bit long enough. So let me see what we got. <sighs> it's always something. Once again, bamboozled by my tool set. So this is a standard drill bit. You can see obviously the chuck 
has no room for clearance. So we need an extended version of this guy. So, all right, we have the drill bit. I feel like that one guy, we have the meat. So I got the 12 inch and I'm glad I did because there's a six inch drill bit and a 12 inch. Six is half of this and it looks like half would put us at basically the same size as the stator. So do yourself a favor before you start, get a foot long, get your foot long here, get your uh, 12 inch quarter inch, 12 inch long quarter inch drill bit so you can make magic happen. Let's drill this out. Enough talking, more action. Make it happen, Kathy. 12 inches of fury. All right. Quick recap before we get spicy on this. We got this guy, and then there's a hole in there. So these intersect. So you drill this one and this one. I'll refer to the book on which one I drill first, but we're going to take both those dudes and open them up to uh, this guy. Ooh. Bing, 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 bing. That only took forever. So. I don't know if you guys can see, but if you look down, you see it show up in there. See? Whoop. So now we got to drill this hole, which actually looks to be the right size. And they said that some of these were uh, quarter inch, but I'll just run the drill in there anyway. And those two dudes are good, and we'll have to find the holes adjacent on this case. Yeah, see, that one's already. All right intersecting hole was already quarter and then we just drilled that guy out so let me find the adjacent holes here and we will do the same and then we are done with the pump so i'm not gonna bore you guys drilling the other holes out i will find them and i will show you which ones they are which ones to drill and then that will be it for this so let me find those do that all right so well it turns out mine is already drilled um i will show you so pretty much the rest of these holes too all these holes that are in here, it's quarter, quarter, quarter. And then I don't know what this relief guy is. Those are all quarter anyway. And then this is the new one that we punched out. And then same thing on the opposite side of the cover. There was one guy down here. Bam, this guy, he's quarter as well. So I think we are good on all of that stuff. I feel pretty good about all of that. So I think these are all pretty much good to go. Okay, after a little MacGyver action, we've got the new bushing installed and we've got the new front seal. So those are in. Here are the old ones out. Uh, next, we will do this portion of it. We will thread this guy, get this all situated. And then I will put the rest of the stuff on here. Lip seal and assemble. So let's do that. So there it is, there's my piece. So we have a little piston back in there, put the spring in there, and then this is bottomed out past where this hole opening is. We got a bunch of red Loctite. I don't think that thing's coming out anytime soon. So, especially with the heat and everything that gets applied to this, that's probably a permanent uh, fix. So let's put the rest of these things on here, show you guys how to bolt back together. On a quick tip from YouTube, they said you squish them together because they kind of have memory. So that way they want to be together. And then if you can see it, they overlap and they need to be like this. If they're like that, it won't seal. So it needs to be just like you're cutting crown molding or whatever in your house. Terrible, by the way, you gotta do that. So here are my seals. And then see when you squish them together, see how it seals out, it seals up there and there. That is it, these are our Teflon seals. It's weird, it doesn't seem like it would have the tension outward to, to seal it up. But I've got these, I will keep these just in case. I will put those somewhere special. So we got this, that. Last is this guy. It's our last uh, lip seal. That looks good to me. Looks good. Okay, so we need to bolt this pump back together. Um, it is not pinned anywhere. When you set them together, they can kind of move around a little bit. They need to be pretty much squared up. That way all the passages and holes and everything lines up. So, earlier when I showed you that I got hose clamps, that's why I got two of them, is to make basically a giant hose clamp so we can get these where they go, put the hose clamp around it, snug the bolts down, 
tighten this up so that way we know it is square and then we could tighten it the rest of the way. The other option, although I did see that was pretty smart, was you could literally just stick it back in the case because the case should hold everything center. Okay, so first things first, the gears need to go back in. You don't want to put anything together dry. So this is my, I don't have a squirt bottle, so we'll just give her a little dash in there, make a little mess, have a little fun. All right, you got that. Here are my gears, I'll do this one handed. And remember I put a dot on these so they'd line up. Right, that one is in. And now we will line this one up with the dots like we had when we started. So here, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a dot here and a dot here. So I line them up. They are facing the same direction. They have essentially been reassembled the same way. And you can just give it a little squirty squirt, squirt a -roo. Make a mess, because that's always fun. There we go. So the gears are in, this thing is ready to get sandwiched back together. Okay, so check it out. The case is gonna hold the pump. So this pump, the two halves are centered. So I can start my bolts and snug them down. And then depending, I'm gonna have to torque them. So let me get the torque specs, but yeah, this is the way to do it. So let me start my bolts, make sure everything's lined up, and we'll torque them down. And that's it, and then the pump's assembled, put the lip seal back on and take it out because we're not that far yet. But I think using the case as a jig is kind of where it's at. Instead of trying to do this, and then hopefully it's lined up or whatever, you slam it back in the case because it's already empty anyway, so. Bolts are in, they are snugged down. Let me figure out what the foot pounds are. I wanna say it's 15, but don't quote me. Let me double check. Get my torque wrench out. We will torque these in a star pattern. We have a regular. All right, book said 20 foot-pounds. All right, all right, all right. We got ourselves a racing pump. Let's put that slip seal back on. That's what I'm talking about. I hope that thing works, man. So that is as far as I think we're gonna get for today. So we have a modified racing pump that's clean, ready to rock and roll, to be installed into the transmission. So the next step that I'm gonna do is actually take everything, clean it down really good, and then we'll go over loading the clutch packs and putting everything back together, because that was pretty much the only other thing, so modifying the case. And then now it's cleaning stuff, reassembly. Oh, and then I'll have one more thing after that that we're gonna have to measure and check. But that's to be done next time around. Thanks for watching the Racing Power Glide series by Burndown. And yours truly, I hope this voodoo works, man, because we need to do some smoky burnouts. I'm getting antsy. You guys, I'm out.